In a charm to excite love, a grey-eyed maiden is besought to rise from a spring and help a darling wife. She is to fetch water from the spring of love that the wife may wash her baby, her little bullfinch, and make it very beautiful so as to admire it by everyone. In a charm to fortify water and give it virtue, a slender-fingered maiden is invoked to rise from a spring or from the gravel and to fetch energetic, serviceable water from Jordan in which Christ was baptized. Lastly, a maiden from a dell, from the humid herd, or a warm maiden from a spring, blue socks, from a swamp, a swarthy girl with a shaved head and skinless teeth, was holding a copper box containing a golden comb. One of the teeth of the comb fell out, and from it sprang a splendid oak, the head of which seized the sky, and its branches held the clouds. The mist and fog maidens differ considerably from their sisters of the air. The mist and fog maiden and the air maiden, Autaretar, is asked to sift down mist and fog to prevent an enemy seeing either to attack or to escape. The maid of mist and fog is invited to clip wool from a rock and make a shirt of mist, a copper cloak, which an exorcist can wear day and night as a protection against sorcerers. With epithets of a leaf bud, she bone yarn, dressed in a fine linen, she is invoked to scatter fog from a sieve before the white animals of the forest. When they approach a hunter so that he may have time to get his bow ready. Fire is the offspring of Hohenes, of the Panutars, fire's daughter, of Lemmes of the Lentohatars, who gave birth to her child in the sea. She could not hold or touch it, and from that she knew it must be fire. Hohenes of the Panutars is invoked with Nurnus, mentioned above to bring frost and ice to freeze an exorcist and allow him to handle the fire without hurt. Panutar, the best of girls, is asked to come and quench a fire by putting it into her clothes and keeping it safe there. An anonymous made of fire is desired to extinguish fire and repair Panu's work. She is to bring frost, ice and iron held to apply upon the burns. If that is not enough, she is to poke a heifer's height into fire's mouth or throw it over Panu's head. The maid of pain and sickness, Kivutar, in spite of her name, is always invoked as kindly, benevolent personality. Kivutar has a kettle, the daughter of Vaina, in a pot, in which she boils pains on the heel of pain, and then flings them into a hole nine phantoms deep, so that they cannot possibly escape the vehement maid of Kipula, sitting on a speckled stone, spins pains on a copper spindle, winds them into a ball and hurls them into a sea. The good mistress, Kivutar, the distinguished Wammotar, daughter of wounds, is asked to take a feather, sweep away wounds to put them into her glove, which she is then to thrown down on the hill of pain, on which is a big stone. Then she is to break the stone, to poke the glove inside and roll it into the depths of the sea. The lovely old wife of pains, the good mistress Kivutar, is requested to come and see the sufferings in a human body and make them cease. She is to wrap them up in a bundle and throw them into a mountain cleft, into a blue stone into a liver-colored chink, where they will never be heard again. Kirsti, the maid of pains, sits on a stone of a pain where three rivers flow, grinding the stone of pain, twirling the hill of pain. She is asked to gather the pains into a hole of a blue or a speckled stone and then roll them into the water. An exorcist wishes that certain pains may be shot down on the pillow of Baivatar. The maid of swellings, Kulatar, the active girl, the packer-up, is desired to pack up her packages, to remove her needles and monstrous things, and take them to an apple or an oak tree. The beautiful old mother of pains, the 
great mistress of the heel of pain, the old maker of salves, that makes the best of magic cures, is requested to try it if certain ointments are good, and if so, to bring them anoint a sick man's wounds. It is only when we come to origins that the old wife or daughter of pain and sickness is regarded as an evil spirit. Inflammatory wounds result from the fire that fell from the fiery horn which Kivutar, the old wife of pain, was carrying. The daughter of pain, the daughter of death, fell asleep on a meadow, was made pregnant by an east wind and gave birth to a snake, and the daughter of pain and Tuoni's son are the parents of snails. Thank you so much for listening. I have a new course slash lecture series on mermaids in Finnish mythology. If you would like to deepen your knowledge, you can check out that course. People don't always know that I keep courses in Finnish folklore, so I shall try to mention them more often. You can find my courses at fairychamber.gumroad.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my name there is at fairychamberart. Have a great day. Bye.